afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this club conference. We'll go straight to questions. So if there are any questions, I'll close off. Hi, DG. Oscar Murphy from Reuters. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, I hope you don't mind if we do them one after the other. Um, Please, go ahead. Just want to get to exactly what has been agreed between you and Iran. Um, it seems to me that we have three issues here, really. So one is Fordo, one is the monitoring equipment in general in Iran, and the other is the safeguards investigation. So I'm just going to go through those quickly. Um, on Fordo, uh, was anything agreed during your trip on verification and monitoring uh, that wasn't already agreed at Max Aparo's meeting in Tehran on February the 23rd, which was mentioned in your JCPOA report. You know, the report says, Iran confirmed that it would facilitate the notified further increase of the frequency and intensity of agency verification activities at Fordham. That's my first question. Okay, thank you very much. Good to see you all. Uh, yeah, uh, I think you, you're spot on on the uh, three main areas. And in fact, that corresponds to what I had said before coming. This, this was, these were the issues I, I, I wanted to discuss. So um, regarding uh, the, the first issue, which has to do with the, with the implementation of the, of the Comprehensive Safeguards Agreement that you identified as Fordo, um, I would say that, uh, yes, during the technical um, trip that preceded my visit, there were a number of things that were agreed, but they needed some consolidation and confirmation. So it was a continuation of what DDG had started, and we uh, consolidated uh, all of that. Um, there had been some exchanges, and we were not seeing eye to eye. Finally, it was possible to, uh, for, for Iran to understand what, what we needed, what, what was the technical evaluation justifying the increase, which is quite, quite a marked increase in the verification or inspection intensity at that place, so that that, that was done. Uh, then uh, on the monitoring, well, uh, yes, uh, we, we, we agreed on, on the, uh, on the opportunity. I, I actually have a specific question on that, but I'd rather leave it. Whatever, yes, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, thanks. Um, so, uh, on the monitoring, uh, this you were just getting to, forgive me for interrupting, um, but so to be clear, so Iran has given, has Iran, sorry, given you a firm commitment that it will allow the reinstallation of all the monitoring equipment that was installed under the JCPOA, uh, including online enrichment monitoring, uh, and will Iran hand over the monitoring equipment data that has stayed in its possession? Well, um, I would say in general terms, yes, but you may have noted that uh, in the joint uh, statement, there is a reference to certain modalities that need to be uh, agreed upon. And this is an important point because we were never um, uh, expecting the process or this monitoring capacities to be interrupted in the way they were. Um, so we will have to discuss about this, how, 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 how do we do it? We have our ideas and this will be part of the uh, technical discussions that are going to be undertaken as a follow-up to my uh, visit and to the joint statement. And a technical team will be traveling to Iran very soon to do that. Okay, so then so in a similar vein, so then on the, on the safeguards investigation, you know, there's slightly more specific wording there in a way. Uh, you say Iran expressed its readiness to provide further information, but so how, how firm is that, is that commitment? Uh, and are you, sh you mentioned some things in your, in your airport press conference, but so are you sure it's going to include access to all the places, information, and people that you want? You did specifically mention yes. uh, persons of interest. Um, or is this just an agreement to hold a meeting about it? So, you know, uh, no. as, you said on the, as you said on the monitoring equipment, there's reference to another meeting, um, but on this, uh, issue as well. Is there some kind of firm commitment or is this just an agreement to hold a meeting about it? No, no, no. It's not, a meet, no, it's not an agreement to discuss this issue. We have been discussing this issue for three years. So we don't, we don't need an agreement to continue discussing. We continue discussing. The idea is to move on to, as I said before, to concrete results, which will include all of these things. 
if you ask me, uh, is there a, a list of places, people, etc., that first of all, this might be confidential, as you know, as part of the normal, not only Iran-related, normal safeguards implementation uh, between a country and the agency. And secondly, apart from this principle, there are many things that we still ignore, because when the interaction start, uh, starts and we visit something, or if we take environmental samples uh, of, of material or equipment, this will prompt uh, yet another set of, of uh, uh, meetings, places, etc. So it is virtually impossible uh, to have a list uh, of uh, a detailed list of uh, places or dates uh, related to this process. I, I understand. But it's very hard to distinguish between uh, what you have received, what has really been, you know, what Iran has committed to, what it has mm -hmm. told you yeah. it will give you. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it's, a lot of this seems to depend on future meetings. Is there any more clarity you can give us well, in yes, terms of like is, the, the, where, the, where is, the distinction between these two things There is more clarity. By, why, why don't you let us do our job? You know, uh, unless you want to join us an, as, an, as an inspector, which could be interesting, who knows? Uh, we, we know how to do these things. There are going to be places, lists, some may be uh, useful, some may be less. Uh, so, uh, and what the agency does is that at, at certain moments in the process, we come up with evaluations. And as we have done, when we, don't, we are not getting anything or we are not going anywhere with this process, then we report it, we say it, we complain if you want. So uh, bear with me a little bit when we say we cannot give you at this stage uh, full lists of dates, dates places, people, it, it would be impossible. It has never happened, not only here, but in, in any other safeguards inquiry of a, such a sensitive nature. But what you can be sure about is that the agency will be informing uh, regularly that you will get uh, as much density as, as it is possible. What I can also say is that uh, I sense that there is an understanding that uh, we uh, need certain concrete um, answers from them on certain things. They have been given us some, as you know, and we, after evaluation, considered that they were not uh, technically uh, credible. So, and we were in this vis vicious circle, if you, if, you, if you wish. So my impression is that there is a chance now that we can be moving um, away from, from this thing. Whether I'm sure or not, uh, Francois, what can I tell you? You know, I, we are trying to do our job in the best possible way, and I'm sure the conversation will continue. I think if, if I could just follow up on that, what we're trying to understand is what was different about this visit. We've had frequently the case that just before a board meeting yes. you've gone to Tehran. Yes. What was the dif What is the difference now? Well, I think there are many. Uh, yes, Bethany, there there are many differences, many differences. Well, first of all, it was the first time I could have a serious conversation with the president of Iran about these things. This is this has enormous importance because, of course, he's he's the president, um, and uh, I, I had an opportunity to explain um, um, my vision, uh, the way in which we want to work with them. Uh, we also had a very substantive discussion with the foreign minister, uh, Amir Abdullahian, one of the most substantive discussions I've had with him about uh, these things. And of course, um, uh, Mohammed Eslami has been my more, I would say, um, regular interlocutor, but with him there was also, but apart from that, which you may say, well, okay, these are conversations, although in, in international politics and in politics in general, talking to the decision makers makes a big difference, um, irrespective of the results you may get in the end. But, at the, but a, apart from it, um, uh, when you look at, at the statement and following the logic of uh, Francois in the three areas that, that we have, we see real substance in all of these areas in all of these areas. We see real substance when it, when it comes to, to Fordo, where the agency will be inspecting almost every other day. 
we see uh, substance and important uh, uh, commitments and, and, and agreements when it comes to additional verification and monitoring mechanisms and a technical team of the agency will be traveling very soon to start working on, this, on these modalities. So uh, I believe that uh, there is, uh, there is a, a good opportunity. I cannot guarantee, of course, uh, when people say these were promises. Well, first, it's not uh, promises. We, we do have certain agreements which are concrete. And at the same time, I need to do my job. And I never give up and continue and continue. And, and, and I may have been as frustrated as many other people, perhaps the most frustrated when there, there, there is lack of results uh, could, have, could have been me. But, um, but we continue and I think this was a step in the right direction. Let's put it like that. Yes. Hi, DG. Jonathan Hi. Tyrone with Bloomberg. Hi. Two very brief questions. Israel's Prime Minister addressed you directly in a statement yesterday. Uh, under what circumstances would it be permissible for Israel or any other country to attack Iranian enrichment facilities? You're asking me? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, well, uh, yes, I saw that. Uh, I would say, um, I, I, would like, I, I would like to precise something. Um, I, I wouldn't comment, of course, on what the Prime Minister of, of Israel had to say about me or, or my statement, but I, let me precise the, on the issue. On the issue, uh, I think there is nothing new, really, on what I said. What I said is, is I reiterated international law. International law from the Geneva Protocols in 1949 and thereafter several resolutions of the General Conference of the IEA, the Board of Governors, have reiterated that attacks on, on nuclear facilities are illegal, are, are, are a violation of the UN Charter, the Statute of the IEA, etc. So I did not uh, say, say anything which should be considered as, as departing from what is in the public domain. So then, yeah, maybe that caught okay. the attention of That's the fine, and, and, I just, and I just wanted to follow up on that. So um, what are the risks that the IAEA unwittingly helps to advance a military intervention in Iran by not immediately addressing all the potential causes of the episode of 84% particle sample? Mm -hmm. Because speculation was allowed to linger for a couple of weeks yes. now. Yes. Well, maybe, um, uh, first of all, on the 84%, uh, uh, I think they, this is a matter that perhaps uh, warrants a separate discussion. But in general terms, I would say this. Uh, when, when people uh, t tries to establish links, between my reports or what the agency does or, or that or does not do and possibilities of, 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 of military action. I think what is, what is clear <laughs> is that at every, uh, at every turn, uh, on every opportunity, since I have been in charge of this dossier from my election in 2019, I have been always, always opening doors, looking for possibilities, uh, trying to confirm that uh, diplomatic technical solutions are possible. This is my job. Maybe military people think otherwise, but my job as a diplomat, 40 years of work in this area, I will always try to do this. So I think it is obvious that what the agency has been doing is exactly the opposite. What we have been doing is trying to find spaces, looking into ways in which what we do, the agreements we have, the promises we receive, I don't know, <laughs> uh, can help. Um, continue in this way and, and, and diffuse and deter any possibilities of, of the use of force, which, of course, uh, as, as a diplomat, as I say, I tend to dislike. Thank you. Uh, hi, Rahida Bahnam from Al Arabiya. Um, on uh, the investigation that the IAEA is, um, um, is doing in Iran, you said that this trip you found something different, you agreed on, on something more specific. Um, and I know you don't like to put deadlines, but there must be some framework you have agreed to work on. Do we expect to have this investigation solved before the next June meeting, for example, or well, when do you expect to have tangible thank you the, results? Thank you for the question, because this is something that um, I think um, 
well, we always try to learn from past experiences. And one of the lessons that I learned is that perhaps having roadmaps, dates, um, uh, calendars, might not necessarily respond to the realities that we are confronted with. Uh, with. So uh, now we are focusing on the problems that we have in front of us. And of course, of course, we do uh, operate against the background of uh, political realities. And we know that this, this cannot be a process that continues uh, dragging on in, in, in this way. Uh, so if you ask me, I would like to have it solved by next week. Uh, but of course, it will take time. Uh, as I was saying, re responding to previous questions, uh, here we have uh, uh, three different locations with three completely different characteristics historically and in terms of what we want to ascertain. So the, the process is going to be uh, a serious one, a systematic one. And you can have, uh, as well as the international community, my assurance that we want to move promptly. Uh, with this. Whether it coincides with the calendar of the Board of Governors, I don't know. I hope it will, but perhaps much earlier. We have a question on the back. Yeah. Moussa Asi, Almeyadin TV. Monsieur Grossi, j'ai deux petites questions. La première, oui. est-ce que, on, euh, donc après cette visite et le résultat avec lequel vous êtes euh, revenu, est-ce que cela suffirait pour ne pas qu'il y ait une résolution semblable à la résolution qui a été sortie en octobre passé, durant oui. ces prochains jours. Et ma deuxième question en même temps, est-ce que cette visite, toujours avec la possibilité de, cette, de cet optimisme avec lequel vous êtes revenu, est-ce que ça pourrait ouvrir la porte à une nouvelle round de négociations oui. entre l'Iran et 4 plus 1 Merci. Merci. Pour ce qui concerne des, des résolutions, ça, c est, c est, comme vous le savez, c'est quelque chose qui est dans les domaines des États membres. Donc c'est à eux de juger et de voir si, devant les éléments qui sont là, les rapports que j'ai faits, les résultats de ma mission, la déclaration conjointe, etc., euh, ils veulent réagir ou pas. Ce n'est pas moi qui dira il faut une résolution ou pas. Ça, c'est une spéculation. Et la question m'est posée et, euh, fréquemment. Mais moi, j'ai toujours la même, la même réponse. Vous dites « je suis optimiste ». Moi, je dirais « je ne suis pas ni, op ni optimiste ni pessimiste ». Je crois qu'on est dans une voie constructive. Et, et, et comme, on dit, comme on dit toujours, on a, on, a, on a confiance, mais on vérifie tout <rire> ici à l'agence. Donc, euh, c'est un peu l'esprit le, avec lequel je suis, je suis revenu des terrains. Pour ce qui est d'un lien éventuel entre ce qu'on a fait, ce qu'on a obtenu, et la possibilité d'une voilà, relance d'un processus négociateur, etc. Et encore une fois, je dirais, ce n'est pas moi qui décide de, de, la, de la reprise de ces négociations, mais j'en suis conscient du fait et, 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 la, et la question a été effectivement évoquée lors de mes discussions à Terran. Euh, je suis conscient du fait qu'avec euh, des bons résultats dans, dans, dans l'espace le, dans euh, de l'agence, il serait beaucoup plus facile d'avancer dans cet autre domaine, en particulier, en particulier lorsqu'il s'agit d'établir les bases d'information sur les activités euh, on pouvait, au, à, auxquelles on avait accès grâce aux moyens, euh, aux moyens des euh, les caméras, etc., qu'on avait perdu euh, au, mois, au mois de juin. Moi, je pense qu'avec ces, ces arrangements, avec l'idée de réétablir euh, ces, ces capacités de l'agence, on va pouvoir peut-être faciliter et créer un pH plus positif, éventuellement pour une négociations dans ces, dans ces domaines-là. Yes. Yes. Switch this on. Um, I just wondered whether you feel dismayed but, uh, by what has been said in Iran since the end of your visit. 
In fact, a few hours after you came to Vienna and you had the press conference at the airport, the Iranian authorities seem to have walked back on some of these uh, promises uh, that they made to you. For example, um, access to individuals. They say there won't be any access uh, to individuals. They, in terms of the three uh, undeclared places, they are saying that they, they basically promising that they will cooperate as before, as we've, we've been there before, kind of thing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. It's been going on for four years, the kind of promises. Or uh, the promising that they, they have, uh, you will have um, more um, opportunities for monitoring mm -hmm. uh, or verification. Are you dismayed? Or, and if not, are you over-optimistic uh, with what you have achieved? Neither nor. I'm not dismayed. I, I read, I, I, I see what, what, what is being said. And, and, you know, in this process, if I was to be guided by press comments or press statements, I wouldn't get too far. Yes, yes. These are statements. Yes, yes. They, I talk to them. I don't talk through the press. Them. I, 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 I hear, I listen, uh, there are contexts, political contexts, in which things are being said, but uh, when they tell me that they are not going to be doing something, uh, I will look into it um, with, uh, with uh, the seriousness. It, it, I'm, not, I'm not dismayed. I'm not dismayed. Uh, I think we are at the, at the beginning of a new phase. It's not a new process. It's a, it's a, it's a new phase after certain agreements that we have come uh, uh, to, uh, to get. Over-optimistic? No. I don't, I'm not even optimistic, as I was saying. I, uh, I try to be realistic. I know that these things were important, I can. I, I, I was. I was trying to to obtain these results. So, in a certain sense, I'm satisfied that we seem to be moving into more uh, firm ground, and that certain things are going to be to be done. Um, but of course, we walk with 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 uh, with caution uh, and and you know, uh, point by point, uh, issue by issue. Uh, Albert Otti, DPA, German Press Agency. Um, I have two questions, if I may. Yes, please. One, I'm not. It's something that Francois asked, but I'm still not quite sure. Uh, have the Ira Have you agreed with the Iranians that the IA will be allowed to access the previously recorded surveillance data and the future surveillance data of these cameras that are supposed to be switched on again, or is that something that you have still to agree with the Iranians? It's my first question, and my second question is. Um, if for whatever reason there were another spike of enrichment in Iran at 84 or above, under the new more frequent inspections in Fordo, how quickly would your ex uh, inspectors, in how many days would your inspectors find out? Okay. Well, on the, on the first one, I think uh, in my reply to Francois, I, I, I think I addressed that. There are certain things that uh, we need to clarify. Because you must remember, maybe this is getting into too too much detail, and I don't know if the uh, if it, for the general public it is clear. But in the previous um, um, agreement we had had about this kind of information, uh, there was a, a specific mechanism that they would keep the information, that but it would be under the seals uh, of the IAEA. So this is something we will have to sit down and discuss. Uh, if we continue with the same logic or or if there are any any modifications to that to that logic but this is a technical point um, number one uh, on the on the spikes well uh, first of all I would say we were uh, able to determine and spot this issue without an increased regime I would say in general uh, the IEA would be able to uh, identify any type of uh, level um, uh, spike, non-spike, uh, at any time. Uh, this is important. It was judged by uh, my inspectors as important, uh, given the uh, modality of operation 
of the cascades, the modifications that were introduced to that uh, particular area of the facility, uh, the functionalities it, it allows. So they felt it would be important to have a more regular presence. But it is not as if without it, we would not be able to get it. I think even without it, uh, we would be able to, to get uh, any type of reading which would be relevant and pretty confident, as, as it was the case uh, before. Oh, hello, uh, Seth Goinaki with Nippon Television. I have also a follow-up question on Iran. Um, you at the airport, you mentioned about the new baseline for the, the JCPOA uh, reconstruction of the activities of the IAEA. Mm -hmm. And the wording of the new, I kind of sense that, uh, as you also mentioned right now, that the, the data, missing data, may not be available immediately, and that therefore that you perhaps have to make shift and to create the new uh, baseline, and then later on when it's back again, then you would be able to easily, a little bit more easily reconstruct. Um, is that what you envision? And is that why you, does, what, what do you mean exactly by the new baseline? That's the question no, number no, one. I, uh, I don't know about the exact, thank you for the question, about the exact wording of that, uh, new or not new. The, 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 what's important is that, uh, and, and my answer is quite hypothetical because your question is also a bit of a speculation uh, because we don't know, first of all, whether JCPOA will be revived or not, etc. But in any case, uh, what I had been saying and also in my reports was that uh, given that the, uh, the information um, had been lost, I mean, not, not lost, but the, the flow of uh, information for the agency uh, had been lost, we would not be able to provide this uh, kind of, uh, uh, call it baseline, or however you may wish to call it, uh, to provide uh, uh, ap approximate numbers, ideas of how much has been produced, etc. So uh, clearly we were uh, having a, a deficit. I, I referred uh, to uh, applying a tourniquet on, 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 the, on the bleeding because uh, the, Things were happening constantly without us being able to get any information. So uh, and now this uh, will uh, hopefully stop. It will be a very, I would say, um, painstaking work because my inspectors will have not only to interpret, to read all this mass of information, but there will be some gaps, actual gaps, because what was not recorded or taped we cannot reenact, all right? So there will, there will be a need for us to sit down with our Iranian counterparts, look into records, agree uh, on certain specific measures in order to try to reconstruct the jigsaw puzzle. This is what I was meaning. Uh, sorry, the second question. The s second question was yes. that, uh, I mean, for us as uh, the Japanese, you know, the near weapon degree uh, yeah. particle is a really a huge deal. And we're still a little bit not clear of how and why it happened. Uh, or actually, well, Iranians are saying that this was a mistake. Um, and the, the, is IAEA uh, taking that as uh, uh, the, their word as it is? Or uh, would you be probing a little bit more on that? And also, like, if a uh, facility, even by accident, is capable of having a peak of such a high level, shouldn't I uh, Fordo or any facilities in Iran with 60% or more be m monitored like Rokasho, which means on-site inspection, real-time flow measurement? Well, thank you very much. Uh, so many, many, uh, many issues in your question, but I try, I try to simplify. Um, first of all, um, uh, yes, we, are con we, are, we continue to look into this. You, in, my report says that, um, and of, of course, until it's, if it's made public, you, you, 
you may see it, but if not, uh, I, what I can tell you is that um, we continue discussing uh, with our Iranian counterparts, because it is true that uh, um, certain um, oscillations are possible in, uh, in this type of cascades. So you may have readings higher than the expected levels from the, from the operator. Uh, but the inspectors are able, by looking at the information and at the way the flows and the way in which the cascade is operated, they would be able to determine whether this is a, a, a one shot or a one time um, occurrence or whether there was a more dedicated uh, activity there. So we agreed that we will continue uh, the, the discussion. And regarding your, the second part of your question, which is even more complex, uh, you cannot compare too much Rocasho uh, in terms of volumes, technical characteristics, and photo. But in any case, I can tell you that, as, as we were discussing just now, with the frequency of inspection, which is going to be very, very intense, uh, I think we will have a very good coverage of the uh, functioning of these um, cascades. Question. Hello, DJ Gurusi. Uh, this is Ahmad Samadi from Iran International TV. Hello. Uh, I heard your response to my colleague about uh, what Iranians said uh, in contradiction of your remarks. But I want to know about uh, this uh, point of your remarks about the access to persons, uh, materials, and also facilities. Iranian side told there was no discussion about access uh, the persons and there was no text about it. Mr. Kamalbandi told also uh, Iran would definitely reject such requests if they were made by IAEA. I want to know what is your precise response to this uh, point? Well, again, uh, I would not comment or enter into a polemic with the deputy director of the uh, AOI. He said that to the press. We are discussing all these things uh, with Iran. Um, it is correct that we did not put things on paper. We are discussing. Uh, these are sensitive matters, as you can imagine. The agency has an idea of what he would like to be, where he would like to be, or wh who, with whom he would like to talk, or the places it would like to, to visit. But of course, uh, we need the agreement of Iran to, to be able to move on that. So here, there is no imposition uh, whatsoever on our part. We are undertaking a professional, technical conversation with them about this. Yes, you can, of course. Um, you seem uh, listening to you today during this press conference and also yesterday, the day before. Um, I get the impression that you're not overly concerned about finding uh, uranium enriched to 83%. I would have thought everyone else is, but you seem to have taken it in your stride that this kind of thing might happen and we will look into it. No, so no, 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 nothing, no, 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 nothing, let, nothing let me, sort of let, no, uh, immediate let, let or me dispel this, urgent as uh, far as you're concerned. You know, it's not, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 is, it is a serious uh, development and this is why I, I, I raised it with the government and we have acted on it. Uh, what we do not do as an international inspectorate is to react emotionally or uh, making political statements which are not um, uh, befitting uh, our role and our mission. We uh, identified something which is, is, is of course serious, uh, but we need to go uh, to the bottom of the issue before we can reach uh, a conclusion. When we say spikes occur, it's because they do occur. I have to say it, otherwise I would be jumping immediately to the conclusion that this was part of a deliberate campaign of enrichment at almost 90%. So that would have very serious consequences. So this is why we have to take it uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a way that it is technical and very transparent. So we are trying to explain 
uh, to you and, and, and to the international community that, of course, this is worthy of our serious consideration, and this is what we are doing. We are not saying, we are not dismissing anything. We are saying this is a serious matter. We are looking into it. And how long are you giving yourself time to get to the bottom of this? Well, we are looking into this. I, I guess that you, this one should not take a, a very long time because uh, w what we are looking is at a very, if you want, the, the snapshot is quite clear, is precise uh, around the time uh, where this uh, uh, reading was, uh, or you know, through the samples we took, uh, happened. And uh, let me also say that the agency has also informed that there has not been production. This is also very important. There has not been any accumulation. You are saying or they saying? I am saying. If I say it, it's because it, my inspectors uh, have verified that. When they say something, we listen respectfully, but then we verify. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much.